Thank you, Katie. So let's stop then. All right, so we'll stop with the uh, the basic uh, knowledge of what is power factor correction, and then uh, we'll uh, we'll continue with the with the presentation. So, what is PFC? So PFC stands for power factor correction, and power factor um, is the the ratio of the active power, which is also called real power, over the apparent power, and the active power is in what apparent power is in uh, volt amperes. So um, that being said, there's a um, there's a very popular analogy on the on the web. You can find a lot of uh, a lot of different versions of it um, to show uh, or to illustrate this. And I've I've picked one for you just to show you. Uh, the the popular analogy is to use a, a glass of beer. So you have uh, the total. Uh, the apparent power is the, 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 the total glass. And the real power, the active power, is the actual liquid that you can drink. And the rest, which is in the form of, a, of the foam of the beer, this is the reactive power, or it's the, the wasted part of it. Um, and as you can see, uh, when there's a lot of Foam, a lot of reactive power, then means you have a low power factor. So the real power that is really used is is lower compared to the total apparent power. That's that's to give you a, a graphic idea of, of what this is. Now, if we look at from an electrical point of view, now uh, the ideal case which gives a power factor of one is a simple resistor. So if you apply a sinusoidal voltage across a resistor, uh, the current will also be sinusoidal and in, sh in phase with the voltage. And that's what you see here. Now, if you take um, a generic typical power supply, most likely you will have a uh, diode bridge, rectifying uh, bridge, fo followed by a filtering capacitor, and then the rest of the circuit. And in general, with this configuration, the current is far from being, being sinusoidal and might also be out of phase with VIN. And what happens is the current flows into the input only when the diode is conducting, and the diode is conducting only to recharge the filtering capacitor here. And this happens so, some during some time at the top of the sinusoidal uh, voltage uh, waveform. And the current appears as form of almost spikes. So then it depends, of course, on the actual consumption of the, uh, of the load and the size of the capacitor, for example. But in general, you will have a shape which is similar to this one on the right. And this, um, of course, as you can see, the current is really not sinusoidal in this case. And also what happens is that you have larger RMS currents circulating in the input um, due, to, due to this uh, shape. Now, why do we need a power factor correction? Uh, really, it comes down to uh, when the power factor is low, there's more power that circulates in the input, in the wires, than what is actually used by the load. So uh, the main risk is overeating uh, the wires. And if you look at it from a selfish point of view in your home, for example, uh, what it means is, let's say you have a, a wall socket from which you, you get the grid voltage, and you wanna connect to that three pieces of equipment of 300 watt each. Let's say you want to do a, have some workstations or something like this. Um, you And imagine that these equipments have a power factor of 0 0.5. So in that, in that case, the total input current that will be consumed by this three times 300 watt equipment on the 220 or 200, yeah, 20 volt AC grid will be 
above eight amps. If you connect the exact same pieces of equipment in the same condition, but uh, imagining that the power factor is one, then you only consume four amp of current. So if this socket, if the, the gauge of the wire that were used uh, makes it rated for six amp, then if you have a bad PF, a low PF, you will exceed that capability. Of course, the risk of uh, having too much current in the wires is uh, worst case if uh, you have a, a fire in your, in your house. Now, if you look at it on a more generic uh, or higher level and consider the, uh, the distribution line, the, the actual grid and the, the wires that are uh, bringing the uh, electricity to, to your neighborhood and your house, um, more current in the wires uh, means more losses, right? The, the losses are proportional to the uh, square of the current. So if you double the current because of uh, a power factor of uh, uh, one half, then you will quadruple the losses in the wires. So of course the birds will be happy, especially if it's winter, they'll be warm and comfy up there. But uh, yeah, in general for, for our system, our grid system for Everything, it's not good to have uh, a higher current than necessary circulating in the wires. And the utility companies push for, for high power factor. Uh, and of course, it makes sense. If you look at this again, uh, you have way more current than, than what is actually used at circulating in the, in the wires. And all this comes from power plants. So uh, if you have all the same equipment with a good power factor compared to a bad power factor, then you may have to add more power plants in, a, in the system. And we all know that power plants are not the uh, cleanest of uh, systems. And anyway, even if you use clean energy, it will take time to bring up to speed and cost a lot of money and so on and so on. So there are a lot of good reasons for trying to avoid that and, and, and be efficient. Um, of course, also from the utility companies, there's the uh, the money point of view, uh, because uh, if they can actually build all the electricity that's generated and not just the one that is used, it's it's better. Uh, even though there are some um, some cases, some places in the world where uh, if the power factor of your installation is is low, they may uh, charge you extra for that. So it really depends on the on the local regulation. Uh, all in all, they, uh, this has um, uh, been put in place uh, under the form of uh, local, regional, and international regulation and standards to force the um, power supplies to have a uh, good PF, good power factor, and the low distortion of the uh, input, um, input current and sinusoidal input current. So if we look at the basic concept of PFC, um, power factor correction. So again, with this typical case of uh, a diode rectifying bridge with an input cap and then some load, we have this current that, that may uh, be more or less uh, spiky uh, and you know, the, the conduction time may be more or less long depending on the, on the, uh, the exact conditions, but Yes, it will look like this. And then if you add a power factor correction circuit, the goal of this and what it does is really to shape that input current and to force it uh, from uh, being this spiky to an actual sinusoid. Here in this case, we've introduced an active circuitry in between the diode bridge and the capacitor. And this circuitry here, that's what it does. It forces the current to be sinusoidal. Now, how can you do that? So there are several ways to of doing this. Uh, could be passive, could be active. The most simple uh, passive way of of forcing the current to be uh, sinusoidal and in shape with uh, in phase with the voltage is to use an input filter. Just uh, have an input filter, low pass filter. Uh, that can force the, the current to be um, in the frequency, uh, sinusoidal in the frequency of the grid, so 50 hertz or 60 hertz, depending on the region of the world where you are. 
uh, you will then have the current follow the voltage. And you know, it's it's very simple, but it because of this low frequency of the grid, then it means uh, large a large filter, large inductors, and uh, not not always practical and also costly. Another passive way of doing this is uh, what's called the valley field um, circuitry arrangement. So the idea here is to um, split this uh, filtering capacitor that's placed after the rectifying bridge and that converts the voltage to DC. Uh, so you split it in two and then with a diode arrangement here, uh, make it so that it charges the caps from the grid, it charges the caps in series, but then discharge them in parallel thanks to the diode. And what it does is it uh, enlarge the conduction time of the diode bridge. So it makes the current look a little less spiky and a little bit closer to the um, uh, sinusoidal case. Of course, it's not going to bring the power factor to one. This at best will get you above 0 0.7. Um, but there are some applications where this can be acceptable, especially at, at light load. So, um, of course, it depends on the, the situation. Now, you can also, to reach higher power factor and, and lower distortion, um, there are some active way of doing this. And there are different, um, different possibilities. Uh, one option is to use a flyback. Uh, What's good about the flyback is you can, at the same time, ensure a good power factor and uh, regulate uh, an isolated uh, low output voltage and doing all that in one single stage. So this obviously has cost advantages and, and simplicity. Um, the, the drawback is that it will because it's not using an input cap or a very small one, uh, and it's really uh, operating at a, a low uh, bandwidth to, to maintain the, the, the current uh, sinusoidal, it will not have a very good regulation on its output with a quite a large ripple and not be very good on, on transients. Uh, but for some applications, this, this can be uh, acceptable and enough, especially for low power. Now for higher efficiency, it's better to go with uh, another topologies. Uh, so it could be a buck, for example, uh, and non-isolated. So in this case, you will, if you need an isolated output, you will need to have an, another stage to do uh, the actual uh, isolated regulation. Um, the buck is not very common. Uh, the main reason is because the output voltage needs to be lower than the lowest input voltage. So if you consider the grid, again, means you'll have an output voltage that's below 80 volts, something like this. And uh, as when, you, when the power increases, it means there will be large currents on the output. And again, this is not very good for efficiency. So in general, the most common, uh, the most common structure is a boost. So the boost will take uh, this grid voltage and boost it up to a voltage that's slightly above the highest possible voltage on the grid. So in general, it's around about 400 volts, roughly. Could be a bit, a bit less, could be a bit more, depending on the uh, on the exact uh, input range. And this leads to uh, quite, quite good uh, efficiency and uh, rather simple control. So this is a, a very common, very common uh, way of uh, achieving a, a good power factor. Now there are other PFC structure, many more, uh, and you can see if you if you look, uh, you, you will see a lot of uh, academic papers and and, and other uh, other documents showing all these structures. Um, but most of them are, are still based on the boost topology, uh, and and the reason why there are so many structures is really because uh, uh, they are trying to. Um, to get the best efficiency, the best compromise, let's say, for uh, a given set of conditions. So input, output uh, conditions, output power. 
and also uh, size, form factor, uh, and, and of course price. Price is always the, the, the biggest deciding factor. So depending on this, uh, there are many different structures, as I said. And for example, I've listed a few here. Could be an interleaved boost, could be bridgeless boost, could be a Vienna rectifier, could be a totem pole, uh, PFC. So there are there are many uh, many uh, possible uh, ways. Here I'm showing on the right the totem pole uh, PFC. So it is a bridgeless structure. So compared to the classical boost on the left, where you still have a bridge. Uh, followed by uh, the boost stage. Here, the uh, let's say the bridge is integrated into the uh, um, the regulation uh, scheme. So in yellow here, this could be diodes. I'm showing here the uh, synchronous uh, version. So using MOSFETs that are turned on, uh, and they take care of the positive and negative alternance. So they are. Uh, operated at the grid frequency, so slow switching. And then you have two uh, power switches here that are uh, fast switch, so at high switching frequency to uh, to shape the input uh, current. Sorry. So this is a you know a rather simple structure look, look, when you look at it look at it this way. But of course uh, there are several power switches to drive, so the control uh, is. Uh, is a bit more uh, difficult. Now, to force the current to be sinusoidal on the input, um, there are there are different ways, different control methods that can be used to do that. Uh, here, I'm showing uh, on the top the, the what we call the BCM, so boundary conduction mode uh, that's used for power factor control. Or another name for this is critical conduction mode or CRM. And the idea of this is and why it's called boundary or critical is because the uh, we're just at the edge of uh, CCM DCM transition. So the current barely reaches zero and then the the main uh, power switch is turned on again. And the um, the current in the inductor here, the peak current in the inductor goes to uh, a shape that's proportional to the input voltage. And that sets the so it's the set point for for the peak current in the uh, in the boost in the boost inductor, and uh, using a constant on time. So with this, uh, you have an average current which is forced to be sinusoidal because it follows that shape uh, of the input voltage, and uh, an easy uh, architecture, an easy an easy type of uh, architecture to to achieve this. It also, because it, the current is at zero here, it's easier to, to achieve zero voltage switching, or at least minimal, minimal uh, voltage switching, which is, uh, which is good for, for efficiency. Uh, the, the drawback of this is this very large ripple current because it's, it's twice as much as the average input current. And this, of course, this high RMS current that, that's flowing makes it only suitable for uh, up to a certain level certain power level. So usually we say it's best suited for power less than 300 watts. Uh, this is this is a compromise, so it can in certain condition be used with, with higher power, but yeah, this gives a, this gives you a, an idea. And then the other uh, the other mode is the continuous conduction mode. In this case, the uh, it's running in CCM with the, the current uh, not returning to zero at each cycle. So this, um, because it has a much lower ripple current that has a lower RMS current in the system, you see that the current is really centered around that average uh, input current that you're trying to, um, to force. And uh, um, so this is, as a result, is best suited for, for higher power. Uh, it's, necessarily uh well it's hot switching uh in, in this case uh, and also it's uh uh because of this ccm uh, transfer function it's a more complex uh, more complex to regulate to compensate the, the feedback loop but it gives uh less power losses uh, at higher power 
you will see in the in the in the next slide that I will talk about some of our products at MPS here, and um, you see that some of them, like especially the IHR twelve XX family, is using what we call multi mode PFC. So I just wanted to give you a word on on what it means and what it is. Um, so at high load, at full load, max uh, max power, it, it will it will run in either of the configuration, uh, CCM or BCM. But then when the power decreases, it will go into discontinuous conduction mode, uh, DCM, and, and may have even different type of discontinuous conduction modes, uh, depending on the actual output power. And the goal of this is really to optimize the efficiency, to have the best efficiency possible at lower loads. So we're not just considering uh, the max power, but also uh, the lower lower power conditions. Uh, this is a bit uh, more tricky. The architecture is, is different than just a regular simple BCM. When you go DCM, you still have to ensure that the uh, the, the current is sinusoidal, and and it, it in, it's a bit more involved in the, in the IC and the control scheme to to achieve that. Uh, but the 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 advantage of it is this uh, better efficiency in light load conditions. So that being said, let's look at some of the solution that we have, some of the controllers that uh, we have for uh, power factor control. Here at the bottom, we have the standalone uh, ICs. So all they do is just PFC correction. <clears throat> Sorry, power factor cor correction. Uh, and we have different parts and different families uh, with uh, improvements between them, or they are optimized for, for different applications. For example, this 44018 is a newer generation with lower standby power compared to the, to the other ones on the left. And then we have uh, other variation of this, so 44060 has higher switching frequency, so it can uh, be used to make smaller uh, smaller solutions. Uh, the 44017 has uh, its burst mode that is used for uh, low, low, low power efficiency that's uh, optimized in such a way that there's less uh, risk of flickering. Uh, so it's, it's more uh, geared toward lighting. And then, yeah, we have also an option that's more dedicated for TV. So uh, all in all, they're, they're similar parts, but with uh, slightly different features. Then we also have another family of parts, um, which are a combo of a PFC and an LLC controller, and I will come back to that. Um, but basically, the idea is to have one controller to take care of the power factor control and of the uh, isolated low voltage regulation. And here, we're talking about fully digital core, so it's digital uh, PFC. And for these, we have option of CCM and BCM, whereas for the standalone, at this moment, it's only BCM uh, parts. Finally, we also have an offering of Totempo PFC uh, controllers. Um, there's an existing one, which is um, uh, also full digital with uh, CCM. Uh, mode of operation and um, which is it's a full bridge uh, it's a full bridge uh, controller so it's it's geared towards higher power and then we have in development uh, a new part that will come out soon that is a, a BCM uh, to temple PFC and this one is more for lower power levels so um, I'll, I'll just show some features of these parts just to, to give you an idea of what they do and and what they do in addition of just taking care of uh, uh, the power factor. Uh, so some of the additional features that this part have, uh, for example, is a, a valet turn on for minimum switching losses. So this is for the main uh, switch here. Uh, we, we wait for the, the voltage to be the lowest possible before turning it on. Uh, there's also something that's uh, called improved PhD. This is mainly for um, low power uh, cases, and especially when it's running DCM. I will I will come back to that in a minute. 
Uh, there's also this uh, enhanced dynamic response, and I will also come back to this. Uh, maybe I can I can start with that actually, uh, and then yes, yeah, some burst mode for um, for very low power. So this enhanced dynamic response, um, as I said earlier, uh, when I talked about the, um, the topologies, the the power factor correct controller, power factor correction controller, it tends to be tends to have a, a low bandwidth because it, its goal is really to uh, to shape the current uh, to be sinusoidal at the frequency of the grid. So it means the feedback loop will be uh, all slow and and uh, uh, in in the range of the the frequency of the grid, so which is low. This means that it, in case of a, a, a transient, a low transient on the output of the uh, of the boost, uh, the the response will be will be sluggish, and you you will see uh, overshoots and undershoots on the output. So to counter that uh, in this MP44018, for example, with with added this feature of a variable gain of the error amplifier. So for steady state uh, operations, small signal type of, uh, of operation, then the gain is, is low in the system. Um, but whenever um, there's a larger, uh, a large signal variation, like a low transient or something like this, and the feedback voltage will move more and exceed uh, uh, this range in, in which the, the gain is constant at low value, then the gain will switch uh, of the error ramp will switch to a larger value. And what this does is really to uh, quickly bring back uh, the output into regulation and bring back the feedback into that, that region of small signal. Uh, and so obviously during this, this region, when the system is in this region, then uh, the power factor is not as good, but this is only for transient period of time and then it comes back to the steady state in which the power factor is is greatly controlled and what you see is a you know much better control of the output variation less uh, less overshoot undershoot another um, feature that i mentioned is the thd the improvement so the distortion improvement so if we come back to that bcm uh, operation mode uh, if you look at uh, the ratio of the input voltage over the input uh, current, uh, so the, this is the equivalent resistance that's uh, presented by the uh, the power supply. It's proportional to uh, the inductor uh, value, which is a constant, and to the on time. So the easiest way uh, to make a BCM system that uh, ensures a constant, so to ensure a, a, a sinusoidal current in phase with the sinusoidal voltage. And so it, it needs to be constant. So to do that, you just need to make the on-time constant. So it's a very easy uh, uh, architecture and, and, and easy to put in place. Now, when we want to go into this continuous mode to have uh, a better efficiency at light load, then if you look at now at this equivalent resistance, not it's not only uh, dependent on the on time, but also on the duty cycle. It's the the factor, the product of the uh, on time and the duty cycle. So now it's this one, this T on times DC that you have to make constant. And so this is more complex, and that's why in this IC there's uh, additional additional uh, control circuit to that takes care of this with a uh, a variable on time that made constant, uh, I mean, so that this T on times DC is constant. So the on time is not anymore constant. The on time is variable to compensate for the variation of the duty cycle. And this this is what is achieved in this circuit. The result of this is while maintaining a good uh, power factor and a low distortion is to have higher switch uh, efficiency at light, in light load conditions. Now this is the combo uh, IC, and um, 
Uh, here we'll look at some features as well. So this is in the case of the HR1275, uh, it's using a BCM uh, type of mode. Well, it's multi-mode, so it will also go into BCM for light load, but for the, the max power, it will be in BCM. Uh, there's also some valet switching to minimize the, the losses in the in the main switch. And if you look at the um, the block diagram here of the IC, you see that it's, it has a digital core inside that takes care of the uh, of this uh, and a bunch of DACs and ADCs to interact with the analog uh, variables. Uh, one interesting feature to, to show also is that this uh, zero crossing detection, instead of using an auxiliary winding on the on the inductor, the, the main PFC inductor, Instead, it's it's sensing the voltage through a capacitor and detects the uh, the zero uh, crossing this way. So then this makes it uh, simpler to use uh, a simpler inductor, just one one winding inductor, um, so more standard. If we look at a few waveforms, on the top is full load, uh, left is low input voltage, right is high input voltage, and you see it running borderline conduction mode here in both cases, different slopes due to the voltage, uh, but always current barely going to zero. And then if you look at light load condition at the bottom, then you see here running in BCM. And there are other parts, uh, for example, this HR10 uh, family, HR1X family. And this time it's the CCM, uh, operation for max load still going to BCM for light load, and uh, if, if you look at the uh, the uh, transfer function, uh, the here it's it's based on uh, a, a multiply, multi multiplier which uh, uses the input voltage as well as the average input voltage squared. So it's a bit more complex than the simple on time, constant on time of the BCM. And uh, the feedback uh, the feedback loop here is based on a digital, uh, digital PI. And because it's digital and it's internal to the IC, uh, it can be adjusted by the GUI. Um, so there's, a, there's an interface to control, to control the IC and to, uh, uh, change the, the values of many registers inside the IC. And so two registers uh, are for the KI and KP, so the, the, to adjust the, 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 the PI compensator. And what's interesting is this can be, uh, this can be done in real time. So you can plug um, uh, through the UART pin of the IC, you can, you can connect to the GUI, make changes to uh, the compensation and see the results in, in, real, in real time. So that's it for the uh, power factor correction. We're about halfway through the presentation. So let's now move on to the uh, LLC and in, in general uh, resonant power uh, converters. So uh, the reason why we consider uh, resonant conversion uh, is really uh, when the output power increases, the uh, the classical uh, structures that are used, for example, flyback, uh, they become too inefficient. So, so going to resonant converters to have uh, higher efficiency. Some of the reasons for the the low efficiency are first of all the hard switching of the power switches. So, uh, a power switch uh, has a parasitic capacitance when there's voltage across. The, the switch, there's voltage across the capacitance. And if the MOSFET is turned on, uh, while there's voltage across that capacitor, then uh, this is a, a power that's lost because uh, the power is proportional to the uh, square of the voltage. So any voltage uh, still present across a MOSFET or a, a switch um, will generate losses. And in addition, these losses scale up with the switching frequency, the higher the switching frequency and, and the more the losses. So here the solution is to go to zero voltage switching. Um, and this doesn't necessarily need to, to be a resonant converter to achieve that, but at least resonant converters do that uh, easily. 
Other, uh, another source of losses is uh, are the rectifying diodes. So when the diode is con conducting current in one direction, and then you reverse the voltage across it, you expect the diode, the ideal diode, to block instantaneously. But a real diode doesn't block instantaneously. Instead, there's a current that keeps flowing, that flows uh, in reverse inside the diode, and it takes some time, some recovery time, before the diode actually stops blocking. And this current, this recovery current that flows in the reverse through the diode, it also uh, generates losses. So if the, the solution really to that is to uh, operate these diodes in uh, zero current switching. So first, uh, bring the current to zero before uh, reversing the voltage across the diode. Another source of losses, especially for flyback, is that there's energy stored in the transformer itself, and this is also lossy. So going to resonant converters, it's easy to, um, to combine all this and to, uh, to achieve a, a higher efficiency at, at, uh, at higher output power. So if we look at the LLC, what is uh, uh, LLC? So it's a resonant converter. It's a series resonant converters, converter. And L, L, and C, uh, the name is because it's using uh, three, these three elements, two Ls and one C uh, in, in the, the resonant tank. So you have a switch network. Uh, here I'm representing a half bridge. It could also be a full bridge. Then you have a resonant tank. So in the case of the LLC, you have the magnetizing inductance of a transformer uh, as one inductor. And then you have a second one, which can be uh, the leakage inductance of the transformer. You could also add a physical uh, series inductance to, to, do the, to, do the, to do this as well, to combine both. And then a series capacitance that will ensure the resonance with the, uh, with the, induct the inductors. And then finally, there's a rectifier network to, in this case, I'm showing two diodes. We'll see later, this could also be synchronous rectifiers, so also power switches. And um, the transformer turns ratio here is what scales the voltage down uh, close to, to what, what's needed uh, on the output. And then the, it, the, to control what power is delivered to the output, uh, we adjust the switching frequency. So it's a variable frequency type of control. Um, the good thing about this, the LLC, is that it's it, it can ensure soft switching for all, all the switches. So zero voltage switching for the primary power switch switches here, the half bridge, and also zero current switching for the rectifying uh, diodes on the secondary side. Because it's uh, it's it's using the soft switching on, on both sides, then it's it's uh, easier to uh, operate at higher switching frequency. And high sw high uh, switching frequency means smaller magnetic, smaller capacitors. So in in total, uh, it can be made quite compact because with this high frequency, small magnetics, plus the fact that the LLC has a is a has a rather limited count uh, part counts, then you can really make a, a high power density power supply based on this. Um, of course, nothing is always easy, so there are some uh, some uh, uh, difficulties uh, associated with the uh, controlling the, the the LLC. So the fact that we're using the frequency control and especially in uh, classical, let's say, voltage mode type of control, the uh, the loop compensation is is quite difficult. It's quite complicated. So uh, it's not the best way of of, uh, of doing it. It can be made simpler if instead uh, it's running current mode. So by controlling the, the peak current in in the resonant tank well, or in, in, the, in the main switch. Uh, and this, because there is a capacitor, a series uh, resonant capacitor in the system, one way of uh, measuring the current, instead of adding uh, a, a sense a resistor or a shunt, or some, something like this, we can actually uh, have an image of the current that's flowing inside the capacitor by looking at uh, the voltage across the capacitor, because we know, you know that the current, the, the voltage is an image of the current. 
So if you look at the, the voltage at this point, VCR here, it can be really uh, an image of the current flowing inside the primary by a simple uh, lossless arrangement. So this is a uh, this is uh, in in a way easy to to make a current mode and and uh, without too many uh, associated losses. Now, if we uh, look at uh, uh, the, the gain of the uh, of the LLC um, and versus the the viable frequency, you can see that uh, here we we plotted it with uh, different. Uh, different uh, loading of the output so 100% load 50% load 5% load uh, you see that the um, uh, increasing the switching frequency uh, reduces the gain of the system uh, and there's a point here at the the frequency of resonance where the gain is perfectly one but you see also that the the variation of the gain is is not very large uh, so this uh, limited DC gain range makes the LLC converter uh, not uh, the best for uh, for large uh, large uh, voltage variations of uh, a system with large input voltage and large output voltage variation. So this fits well with the the case where it's used with the PFC because as as we 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 said the PFC uh, has uh, it does a pre-regulation, so it does a, a constant input voltage. So this is good for the LLC. But yeah, also it's not adapted to some applications that have a large variation of uh, out, output voltages. So it's really better suited for uh, constant voltage outputs. Another thing to notice on this graph here is that when the frequency reaches a certain point, then the the gain uh, starts to go in a in a different direction. So there's really a control law inverts itself. Uh, so if here if you decrease the frequency, the gain increases and increases, and then suddenly it starts to decrease again. So there's really a different uh, two regions here: one on the right, one on the left. On the right one, we call it the inductive region. On the left, capacitive region. And so if you wanna uh, have a don't don't want to have problem. Uh, it's better to stick in one region and not not try to go to a different region. Come back to that uh, when talking about our NPS solutions for uh, for LCs. So we have again uh, families of standalone LLC controllers. These are today analog controllers. Even if uh, very soon we'll have a digital one as well. Uh, so standalone, they just take care of the LLC stage and that's it. And then we have also the combo controllers that we've already mentioned that do both uh, the, um, uh, the PFC and the LLC control. And here in this case, it's digital uh, LLC control with, with the current mode. So same as with the PFC, I'll show you some pictures of these. Uh, we talked about capacitive mode protection. So these ICs, uh, they include uh, some ways of detecting that uh, it's starting to operate in the capacitive um, uh, region and to wait and add some delays to so that it doesn't operate in this region and, and, and it's protected against that. Uh, we also uh, we also have on all of these parts what we call the adaptive dead time adjustment, and I will show you what it is in a minute. And there are also some uh, 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 other features to to improve the uh, the surge, uh, the performance uh, uh, on um, on the load transient and etc. So just quick quickly a few words on the adaptive dead time because this is interesting. Um, so normally what you do is you insert a dead time between uh, the high side and, and low side fret of the half bridge uh, to, to give the time to, for the voltage to reach zero before you, you turn on the, the other switch. So you ensure zero voltage switching with this. And the goal is really to optimize the dead time so that it's, uh, it's not too long because longer dead time uh, create also additional losses. So uh, in normal cases, uh, and uh, and in, for the steady state uh, conditions, you can ensure this. But then uh, nothing is always perfect, and you could have 
board-to-board -board variation based on tolerances of uh, many, many things. Could be the IC, could be the capacitors, could be also, uh, for example, the transformer with the uh, magnetizing inductance tolerance. But also on a, on a given board, uh, when the switching frequency uh, is increased to uh, get to lighter loads, as we saw uh, in the transfer function, um, then this dead time may not be optimized for these different uh, operating conditions or these different uh, uh, parameters, let's say. In this case, you could get to uh, cases where there will be hard switching. So the consequence of that is uh, a lower efficiency and you may have some thermal issues and also some higher cost because you may have to design taking this into account. With the adapted dead time, uh, this here will not happen because the IC will detect this and will insert a longer dead time to uh, take care of this. So all you have to do is make sure that uh, uh, you're perfectly set up for the for the for the best case for the max power, and then the IC will adapt uh, so that in other conditions uh, the dead time will be as long as it takes to to ensure the the soft switching. Um, now let's, let's talk a bit about also the features inside the combo chip. So earlier I, I, I didn't mention this, but uh, there's also some general features of the whole system that are interesting. For example, uh, this HR1275 can reach less than 85 milliwatt of input power at no load. Um, so this is, this is quite good and less than 100 milliwatt for some parts, but less than 85 milliwatt for the HR1275. It has also a um, uh, startup current source. It has a X capacitor discharge circuit. And as I mentioned already, this UART interface to uh, uh, adjust with the GUI. Um, so it's digital controller with current mode control and adaptive dead time as well and capacitive mode protection. So uh, things we've already talked about. And again, there's here a screenshot of the GUI. So we saw we could adjust uh, some parameters in the PFC. Same thing, we can adjust parameters in the LLC with, with the GUI. Uh, I'll go quickly on this, but yeah, the HR1275, as well as some other parts, they have this uh, configurable uh, burst mode with different burst modes and different configuration, and everything is configurable by the GUI. And, uh, and, and so, so to set up uh, the best possible uh, mo uh, burst modes and, and light low power modes uh, to get the, the lowest possible standby power, either no load or light load, depending on the conditions. There's also another uh, interesting uh, feature uh, for the soft start, for the startup strategy of the uh, of the half bridge, uh, where instead of being of running at constant fifty percent duty uh, ratio. Uh, it actually uh, authorizes uh, a different uh, duty cycle during uh, startup. So to to avoid some problem of current imbalance during the startup. Here again, some uh, waveforms to show here the, uh, the resonance uh, of the, the signals uh, on, on the upper left, it's uh, at full load. And then some other lower load condition on the right, still still uh, uh, running uh, in in CCM but at uh, lower current. And then when the load becomes lower on the bottom, uh, you see on the bottom left, uh, it start to enter some burst mode. So the current is still resonant and sinusoidal when it's switching, but then there are some idle time inserted to improve the efficiency. And then at very light load goes into this deep uh, burst mode. Um, in addition, uh, two quick things to show. Uh, the first one is this uh, LLC design tool that we have online. You can refer to that to help design an LLC uh, with our uh, ICs or any, you know, any, uh, any calculation for, um, for LLC. It will help you design the series uh, inductance, the magnetizing inductance, series capacitor, etc. And there's also a tutorial on, on the this. So this is on our website, and it's a it's a it's a cool tool to use. It's quite quite easy. 
and it will uh, get you step by step through the design of an NLC. And the second point is, uh, I showed during uh, the presentation of, of the LLC uh, diodes, uh, rectifying diodes on the secondary side, but uh, uh, we actually also have uh, an offering of synchronous rectification controllers to replace these diodes and get to a, a higher efficiency. Um, and again, here we have several parts with several different features. Some are optimized for higher frequency uh, and, and so on and so on. Uh, just one word on this. I wanted to show one part, the MP6920A, for example, and some of the key features. And the, the main one is really the, the fast uh, turn of delay. Uh, so you see it's, um, it's a controller controlling both MOSFETs. So it's one single controller for two MOSFETs. And it's tolerant to 200 volts of uh, drain to source voltage. So it's quite, quite good. Uh, and this, we have this fast turn of delay. And actually, this is, a, this is an interesting feature that these parts have is um, it automatically uh, adjusts its gate voltage to keep the MOSFET on uh, just enough, just what's needed. Uh, and by doing that, it will adjust the voltage down to a much lower voltage than the normal full uh, gate voltage. And then when the time comes to turn off, then it will be a very fast turn off because it only have to turn to, to decrease the voltage by a small uh, amount. If it was to come from the high voltage here that's used at first to turn on the MOSFET, then it will take a much longer time. But then by doing this adjustment, then it has a very fast uh, turn off. So we're reaching the end. Uh, just wanted to, make, to mention that we have evaluation board and reference designs for um, for these type of parts as with everything, uh, all the other parts we have at MPS. So now let's open it up for a question and I give you back the hand, uh, Kenny. Great, lots of good information today, Nicholas, thank you. We already have a queue of questions, but for those of you that might not be aware, you can mouse over the Q and A interface uh, at the bottom at the bottom of your Zoom webinar interface and type in your questions. And then we also always get asked about um, how do I review this session in the future? Monolithicpower.com forward slash webinars. You'll find all of our past presentations. And for this one, we will send it out to you. All right. And with that, let's jump into questions. So the first one in the BCM constant on time doesn't doesn't then the switching frequency vary and then how does that affect pfc operation so in bcm uh, yeah the frequency will uh, will adjust uh, uh, across uh, you know along the the waveform along the sinusoidal voltage uh, so yeah it's a, it's a viable frequency scheme and and um, it's it doesn't affect the PFC operation because it's it's really uh, the way to keep the uh, uh, the uh, the constant uh, the constant resistance of the system and to to keep the the current sinusoidal. So it's it is it is really uh, it is really part of the mode. Now, of course, if uh, viable frequency. Could be in some application the variable frequency could be a problem so then it, it might be better in this case to use ccm even though it's low power it's always a question of compromise uh between um you know what uh, what expectations you have what you need to to meet with the with the uh, with your system so in some cases even though ccm may be a bit more costly a bit more um, difficult to to put in in, uh, in operation but then it's the best solution for a given uh, a given case great thank you uh next up was uh why do you use uh, a d3 diode i don't know what this refers to to be honest uh I don't know this refers to maybe we can go back to some slides to see where, where there's a D3. I assume it's in the, the beginning of the... Uh, it's about halfway through the presentation. I, think. I, I don't, honestly. 
Where's so the D3? It, it, yeah, if you want to clarify that question, we'll circle back to it um, at the yeah. end here. All right. Yeah, um, I don't know. Okay. Uh, next one was uh, I was using the HR1002 for LLC gate driver. I am using 375 watts of input and I want 320 watts of output power, uh, 16 volt. 20 amp output, what frequencies should I choose? <laughs> so we come back to that same answer basically as uh, the compromise, right? Um, the, the frequency you choose will affect uh, the, the efficiency, the, lo the losses, and uh, the, uh, the size of the system. Um, so so it's, a, it's always a compromise. You want to smaller system uh then you use higher higher switching frequency but if you want to have uh higher efficiency then you should choose a, a lower frequency so then it comes down to what compromise you're ready to make so there are it's not a, a, a simple answer there are there are always you can make choices during the design and that's why also uh, we always uh, have to come back to the drawing board and do some trial. Uh, some, so it's an iterative process in, in general to design uh, a power supply and it applies as well to LLC and um, NPFC. Okay, next. Uh, can you explain in LLC why there is ZVS on primary, but not ZCS? And the other way around, there is ZCS on the rectifying diode, but not uh, ZVS. Um, is it is it okay if we reply to this offline, uh, Kelly? Because this is uh, this will take a bit long, and and I, I it would be easier if I had uh, some slides to to show for this, and I, I don't have them. So let, let's let's uh, let's uh, do it offline. Sure. And then for, for the person that, that submitted that one, uh, I, I, you're listed as anonymous, but if you wanna just um, email me at Kelly, K-E-L-L-Y period, curd, C-U-R-D at monolithicpower.com, we'll make sure that that gets answered. Um, so thank you. Uh, and then let's see. What is the typical bandwidth of PFC and LLC? Um, yeah, so as I said, the typical bandwidth of PFC is is, is low, is rather low because you really want to um, to to uh, regulate uh, at uh, the, the the frequency of the grid or close to the frequency of the grid. So it's uh, it tends to be a very low uh, very low switching frequency. Uh, sorry, very low. Uh, Compound loop feedback uh, bandwidth. Sorry, I'm <laughs> mixing my words. Uh, but now for uh, LLC, LLC, yeah, typical bandwidth of LLC can be much higher. We can we talk about uh, several kilohertz, tens of kilohertz. Uh, it, it also depends, of course, on what switching frequency you use, because you know you always have to be uh, lower than your switching frequency by some factor, uh, potentially a decade. So uh, this is. Uh, uh, this is not a straight answer, as always, but just keep in mind that PFC uh, bandwidth will be low, you know, up less than 100 uh, of hertz, let's say, and the uh, bandwidth of LLC can be much higher in the tens of kilohertz, uh, usually. Okay, next up. Are these ICs used in PoE? If yes, do you have an application reference example? POE, uh, no, not that I know. Uh, although uh, I guess you could, uh, you could, but uh, it's not not the case now. I mean, unless you really start to go to very high uh, power POE, then maybe this could be uh, this could become interesting. But up to now, the the power of POE doesn't really. I mean, the the cost of this solution compared to the performance uh, that improve, improvement that you get from this 
doesn't justify the use of, of these parts in, in PoE, uh, at least at the levels, the power levels that exist at the moment. Okay, let's see, back to the HR1002 for LLC gate drive, there is a pin called timer pin, which uses a capacitor and a resistor. Resist, resistor? There is no starting value for these components. The data sheet app note says, figure it out with experimentation. They determine timing. Can you please provide a starting value for the range? Um, okay, yeah, this is a very specific question. Yeah. So we can take that offline. But I, I would say, I would recommend anyway, uh, when it's a case like this, you can start from the, uh, from the rep design or from the uh, uh, the eval board value, so it may not be uh, visible on the data sheet itself, but it will be visible on the bit of material for the for the the eval board or the rep design. So you can always start from that anyway. Okay, let's see, done with that one. Next one, how do you design the components of LLC using the FHA method? Uh, okay, this also will skip that question. Um, this is a, uh, yeah, this is this is a, a much, much more than what we could do during this webinar. Very good, let me just get this name down really quick. And we do have kind of a backlog of questions, so. Thanks, everyone, for your patience. Um, okay, then the next one: How high can gets the P the PF? Uh, um, well, <laughs> very close to one actually. You can get to zero point nine nine uh, with the with this active uh, methods. All right. Thank you. Uh, there was a question about the MP2981 LLC controller, but not, not too much specifics about what the question was. Any comments on that uh, one? Yes, this this one I didn't show here uh, because it's uh, this is a, a controller that's more uh, geared toward the telecom application. It's a, it's a full bridge LLC controller. Um, but this is a also, yeah, it's it's a it's a valid LLC controller, even though I, I didn't show it today because it's normally not used for AC to DC, or, although it can. Um, but yeah, it's another part that we have for sure. On this one, next up, uh, what's the best way to select the switching frequency? Uh, yes, I've sort of already answered that question when I said that it's compromise. Huh? Uh, switching frequency. The higher the switching frequency, the lower the efficiency usually, but also at the same time, the more compact the solution. So it's a trade-off and it's a trade-off you have to make depending on your uh, what you're trying to achieve. So it, this is very often the, how it's decided. Great. Next up, does MPS have, a high, have high power solutions? Uh, 200, looks like 230 volt. AC and 400 volt DC. Yes, so 230 volt AC input to 400 volt DC, 25 amps output. Uh, so this is uh, this is what this is like. Uh, what they do it quickly, but uh, that's probably uh, three kilowatts now, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see. So we say 400 volts, 25 amps. Oh, no, it's 10 kilowatts, yeah. Um, at the moment, no, we don't really have a solution for uh, that high. I think we're, yeah, we're currently in, in, the, uh, in the two, three kilowatt range, maybe. I don't think we have solutions yet up to 10 kilowatts but i i encourage you to uh, to talk to uh to an fae uh at, at mps and uh see see what uh what we can do uh, and this question mm -hmm. one next one was about um an electric vehicle design application 
I don't know. It's a very general question. I'm not sure if you have any comments on that one. Well, it depends. Um, if this is for charging, then probably yes, because then the input will be AC, so you would probably need a, a PFC. Now, if it's a uh, if it's pure DC to DC inside an electrical electrical vehicle, then the then the power factor correction is not needed. Uh, but the LLC could be applicable. Uh, I, I'll just say that at the moment we don't have a, a, an LLC controller that's um, automo that's qualified for automotive. So then the, it's, it may not be from us, but uh, but in general, yes. Great. Uh, on the MP44018, you have a digital core, but use a PI control. Wouldn't it make more sense to use a complete digital scheme instead of PI, which is just a translation from analog schemes? Yeah, so this is actually a very good point. Uh, it's not in the 44018, it's in the combo uh, IC, uh, which has the digital core. The 44018, it's, uh, it's an analog part. But, but yeah, the, the rest of the question is valid. Um, to be honest with you, I don't know why this choice was made. Uh, probably because uh, the the designers considered that the you know in general uh, design the um, uh, power supply designers are uh, more aware and are more familiar with the the PI control and that's what they would want to use. So I guess that well, that's the choice that was made. But uh, but yeah, no, this this point is valid. Uh, could be a uh, it could be a different a different uh, different way a different scheme. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, and then the next one was, what are the prospect, prospects of a multi-output LLC converter? What could be the possible control strategies other than pulse frequency modulation? Uh, yeah, this is an interesting subject. Uh, I'm not sure it's it's uh, uh, you know applied to this to this webinar, which was more of a, a general information on 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 this. Um, I yeah no we're not we're not going to go through that uh, now, uh, Kelly. It's uh, it's uh, it's a different subject. Great. We've got uh, next one. The online LLC tool is primarily set up as a step down system. Would you not use an LLC topology when you want to step step up the voltage? If you can, will you be updating the online tool for step up scenarios? So I'll, I'll respond in general concerning the tool. Um, the tool is indeed, uh, uh, geared toward a certain type of design. So only uh, AC grid input uh, and only uh, low voltage output. This is to make it uh, simpler and easier to use for, for the people and it covers 95% of the, the use cases. So we made this, this choice to keep it simple and to, to, uh, to keep it uh, user-friendly. Um, but yeah, of course that, that are in general, in, it works for the, the majority of cases, but there are always some particular cases where it's not applicable. So in that case, yeah, I encourage you, if you have a specific need, to, to come to us and, and we'll help you uh, with that. Uh, that's, that's probably the, the, the best way of handling it. I don't think we will um, update the online tool to cover all possible cases. Great, thank you. Uh, next up, is the firmware for the digital controller of the PFC totem pole available? <laughs> uh, no, not from us. Not from us. Okay. Uh, combo chip, what is the maximum power that can be used? So uh, this is not really a limitation of the chip, but more limitation of the um, um, of the the topology used the structure. So this is half bridge LLC, and this is uh, uh, you know just a CCM um, PFC. So let's say in general, let's say about one kilowatt is the maximum power. Uh, we have some customers that have used it with higher, slightly higher power, 
Um, and, and again, it comes also down to uh, what compromise you're ready to make, you know, what efficiency is acceptable in your system uh, and so on. So, but yeah, the general answer would be less than one kilowatt. And okay. some people will say less than 600 watt depending on their criteria, so yeah. Uh, then there was a clarifying on my email addresses. Yes, it's Kelly, K-E-L-L-Y, period, curd, C-U-R-D, at monolithicpower.com. You had it correct. I just threw it into the chat, so everyone should be able to see it in the chat, and then you can forward those questions along, and I'll make sure we get them to Nicholas or the other right person. Uh, next up, why oscillation creates, creates during, during light load in... SW pin of the controller. How to butcher uh, that one? Yeah, so uh, this we sh we're showing this because it's it's closer to reality, and there are always some parasitics uh, and some uh, some real parts. Uh, the, there will be some parasitic capacitors, for example, that will oscillate with the um, uh, inductors, even if there's uh, in theory, the voltage is flat, or there should be no no oscillation. In reality, there will be some oscillation due to these parasitics. So that that's why I, I was we are showing it in these slides. But uh, yeah, that's the only reason. All right, uh, we want to do a Simulink model. Then how then how to how to design an LLC, and how to select the appropriate sw switching frequency. Uh, yes, okay. This is a generic question. Uh, how to design an LLC and how to say the appropriate uh, switching frequency. You can refer to our uh, tool online and the uh, and the uh, the um, uh, the video that goes with it that explains how to use it. Uh, I don't see the link with the simulink model uh, in this question. Uh, we don't we don't work with simulink, so we cannot help you with the simulink model anyway. Uh, so okay, not sure exactly where where what uh, is this question. Next one to enhance the PFC response time. Sometimes a uh, fifty to sixty hertz notch filter is used. What is the reason uh, to doesn't oh that you don't use this in your controllers? Um, actually, there's uh, at least one controller that uses a notch filter in, in it. So I have not necessarily talked about it, but uh, there's one that has it. Um, yeah, it's 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 true that it's it's used, it's been used in some parts. Uh, there are other ways to do it. And we think that um, uh, what we have is is good. So we don't we don't use it in, in particular, uh, uh, except one case. So yeah, no no other reason than that. Okay, uh, what is the maximum power currently used for this topology? Is it used for industrial applications of greater than 100 kilowatts? Um, there are better topologies for uh, for uh, higher power. Uh, as I was explaining, you know, you always try to select the best topology for, uh, for a given power. Um, in, in general, uh, for higher power, you will yeah. There are there are some better uh, better ways to to do this for higher power. What I'm showing here is limited to yeah, just a just a few kilowatts. Uh, combo chip. What is the maximum power that can be used? So, yeah, we answered that one already. Yeah. So yeah. let's say okay. less than one kilowatt. Yep. Mm -hmm. All, All right. right. So Uh, this person, are there any automotive qualified controllers? So not at the moment from us, no. Uh, EMI, EMC, I don't, that's going to be a kind of a broad one. I don't know if yes. you want to touch on that. I, I can just say a word that, yeah, resonant converters tend to be better uh, when we talk about EMI, EMC point of view. And I, I mentioned the, the hard switching uh and the uh, recovery time of diodes uh, uh, to be source of losses they are also source of uh, emi noise so going with the resonant uh, will be uh, an improvement will be much better so all these parts uh, are are good for that yeah 
great. Uh, for an LLC converter, should the LM be maximized or minimized? <laughs> so I, I encourage you to go and check the, the we have some documents online uh, about uh, the, the design of uh, LLC in general and explain how to how to best select the, the part. You can also use that uh, online tool. Um, you will see that uh, people have, have worked on this and they have derived some uh, some explanation, you know, which uh, ratio of LM over LS and, and so on and so on. Um, so you can you can refer to that. Yeah, we won't go through that now. Uh, what are what are the recommended parts to go from two hundred and thirty volt AC to twenty four volt or forty eight volt with high PFC and efficiency with one kilowatt or two kilowatt loads? Um, you can you can go on our uh, website and check the reference designs. We have reference design for forty eight volt uh, six hundred watt. We have reference design with forty eight volt uh, three kilowatts. So you can check. Uh, I'd say you know at one kilowatt we're really at the edge of uh, using a a, a boost uh, CCM PFC and maybe going to some other structure like a totem pole or or something like this. So. Uh, again, it will come down to uh, trade off and what you want to maximize and what you want to optimize. Is it the efficiency? Is it the cost? Is it the size? Uh, so yeah, it's not not a question that's easy to answer uh, uh, like this. But you can you can go and check the reference designs that we have on our website, and they will give you a, a ideas or idea of what you can do. Uh in general, for what power range totem pole PFC are preferred? Well, um, today uh, let's say that it's it's starts to be uh, more and more popular. So before we were using it, uh, we were seeing it mostly for power above, let, let's say power in the range of a few kilowatts. Uh, one, two, three, five kilowatts, maybe some, maybe more than kilowatts, and so on. Now we'll see it more and more, um, and it's it, we're also starting to seeing it for even much lower power. We actually uh, this uh, uh, BCM uh, Totempo controller that we are um, uh, developing and that will be releasing uh, soon. This one is uh, optimized for power of. 100 to 300 watts. So, so yes, there's no real range limitation of the totem pole PFC. It's again <laughs> back to that uh, same answer of um, optimization and trade-offs and and uh, and cost and efficiency and and size that you you want which one you want to optimize and how you want to achieve and if you uh, do you have the good control uh, IC also to do it. All right, I think we made it through the the whole list of questions, but uh, <laughs> a lot of good ones today. Um, thanks everyone for sticking with us. We went a bit over time, but uh, appreciate uh, your input and all the the good discussion that we were able to have from that. So um, thanks again. We will have a recording of this out to you soon. And Nicholas, anything else from your end? No, no, that, that's it. Thank you. Thank you for attending and thank you for the good questions and hope to see you soon. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a good thank day. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>